and welcome to another Silverbird Selection Game Review and today I'm reviewing this Silverbird release from 1988 Stunt Bike Simulator Very common game to find out there, my copy only cost me a pound Let's waste no more time and get on and play it As always let's start by taking a look at the packaging and as you can see this is a Silverbird release in the black and pink stripe packaging Nice logo saying Stunt Bike Simulator and a big picture of a bike doing stunts presumably there's a hang glider in the background there as well and on the spine is the Stunt Bike Simulator slightly restructured and on the back four screenshots as always which look pretty decent to be honest quite good graphics by the looks of it big logo on the top of the screen not too bad at all by the looks of the graphics from those still screenshots and the blurb says Super Stunt Bike Action with you at the controls Moving inside the packaging then you can see a very small list of forthcoming Silverbird titles which makes me think this was quite an early release in this range either that or they weren't committing to releasing too many games at this point uh, You've also got this blurb about the five free games which we've seen on previous inlays so let's move on to the instructions You can see Stunt Bike Simulator was done by Probe Software You are Chad Adams, a stuntman in order to show the rest of the stuntmen how good you are, you have set yourself a number of tasks. Swoop down from your hang glider to your bike, jump logs, speed through the fire hoop, catch and drive into the lorry, then clamber up to your helicopter and away. The best in the business. That sounds challenging. Got some loading instructions as always, and then there's an overview of each of the tasks in a bit more detail. So we've got the hang glider drop, log jumping, fire hoop jumping, lorry catching, and helicopter hanging. And then there's also some controls there. I'm not going to go into all the detail in this inlay overview. Let's have a look how it goes when we load the game up. No surprises here given that this is a Silverbird release. Here's a very boring loading screen simply saying Stunt Bike Simulator is loading. But here's a surprise because as the game loads we actually get a proper loading screen that's quite nicely drawn. As you can see you've got the stuntman on his motorbike being chased by a helicopter and it quite clearly says Stunt Bike Simulator at the top. That's quite a pleasant surprise for a Silverbird release. Okay so here's the title screen for the game. As you can see quite clearly says Stunt Bike Simulator across the top along with a score readout. A few options here, pause mode, I guess that's just pausing, uh, music on and sound effects on. So we've got the music switched on at the moment and as you can see it says press fire button to continue. There is also a high score table which comes up at the end of the game. So not much more to say about it, there's a nice little animation actually should mention this of the guy waving on his motorbike, nothing too spectacular going on but there's also a pretty nice background tune. Nothing I would say outstanding about any of it but all pretty nicely presented. So let's move on and play the game. So the idea of the first level is to drive your motorbike which has no rider on it and capture this guy on the hang glider who is basically a stuntman. So you've got to navigate, try and avoid these cones, if you hit them they do slow you down you lose some points. You can see the scores slowly trickling down uh, so you've got to try and catch up to him and, and get him to land on the bike as quickly as possible. Uh, it's not that easy, in fact it's very hard because I've never ever got off this level. I've pr probably played the game I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 times and not been able to complete this first stage. So if I do it during this video it will be a first. Just catching the guys difficult enough and then when you get underneath him on this magically self propelling motorbike you have to press fire to get him to land on the bike and yeah this is what always happens he lands on the bike stands on it and then just falls off so there you go that was my first attempt failed I'll give it another try Uh, graphically I think it's quite nice um, you know it's got some nice parallax scrolling with the road moving at a different speed to the background the background is just a basic sort of desert scene uh, the animation on the bikes quite good the animation on the guy on the hang glider is good as well I've really got no complaints about the graphics I think they're quite good uh, and the sounds pretty nice as well the music there is sound effects which will have a second go of the game uh, with the sound effects on to see how they are so let's try and get under him here we go roughly in the right place again and yeah he's landed on the handlebars and fallen off and I've failed again so let's give it a third attempt 
Now, the animation on the game is fairly simple, you would say, but I still think it's quite effective. The sprites are well drawn. Uh, it's just impossible, it seems, from the number of attempts I've had and failed. We shall see. You never know, it might finally happen. I don't have a lot else to say about it. In terms of the controls, not too bad, you know. Right, here we go. We've got him level, so... Yeah, he's landed on the handlebars and fallen off again. And that's the end of the game. I didn't have what it takes to qualify for the next level. Better luck next time. So, then you'll see the high score table, which has got the developer's name in it there. WR Bury or Bury. Uh, for probe software i would already guessed that this is a probe software game because you can tell by that logo at the top which is very similar to some of their other games like ninja scooter simulator and beach buggy simulator and things like that so let's give it another go just to show just how ridiculously impossible this game is let's switch to sound effects so you can hear the sound of the motorbike running I mean that's pretty much it, it's just motorbike sound effects and a, a couple of little noises when you hit the cones oh god, hit a lot of cones, I don't really think it matters uh, you do lose points and obviously it slows you down but you can always reach the guy um, but yeah I just don't, I just don't get it I think you've got to be at a pixel perfect position for the bike so here we go no, he's landed on the bike again uh, and that looked like a perfectly good place to land the bike, he stood on it, could have dropped down onto the seat, didn't happen. Give it two more goes. I there's nothing more I can even talk about while I'm doing this, I'm just trying to do it see if we get it right this time I'm not expecting to oh, I totally messed that up sometimes you press fire and he doesn't drop down no nope, there we go he's landed on the pillion of the bike again and died <laughs> or fell off at least one last attempt will this be the magical time I finally get the positioning of the hang glider right or the positioning of the bike I should say I mean the whole idea is ridiculous that you can just drive this motorbike that drives itself uh, but I wouldn't mind that if it was actually possible to complete the stage and move on to the later stages you know computer games aren't meant to be totally realistic I don't mind that that's silly what I mind is that it just seems to be absolutely impossible to get him to land in the right place let's go and get the seat level with the front of the uh, hang glider here oh. Right, let's go for it. Here we go. No, he's fell off the back that time. Honestly, I just don't understand how you're supposed to get it to work. So I'm going to give up at that point. This is going to be a very short review, but that's all this game deserves, in all honesty. So let's get on with the review scores. And I have to say, for the most part, they're quite good until we get to the obvious one that isn't going to be. So firstly, packaging I thought was pretty nice. Uh, one of the better Silverbird packagings from the earlier parts of that range pretty decent instructions inside as well I think it's worth a 7 out of 10 presentation again you've got a nice loading screen which is unusual for a Silverbird game you've got high score table not that you'll ever get into that high score table uh, you know various options on the title screen as well so again no real issues with that I'm going to give the presentation a 7 as well graphics in game are pretty good as well I think you know there's some nice animation on the motorbike and the hang glider uh, the background's okay, it's fairly static, except that the fact it scrolls past, of course, but it's fairly static and repetitive. Uh, the scrolling of the road's nice, there's a bit of parallax scrolling. Again, no issues with the graphics, it's going to give them 7 out of 10 again. And the sound too, and the sound effects in-game are not particularly good, but the music's pretty decent, so I'm going to give the sound 7 out of 10 as well. Not outstanding, but definitely better than average. So that's 7 out of 10 for everything, and then we get to playability, and well, it's pretty much non-existent. 
I think if you were able to get past the first stage, maybe there's a reasonably playable game in this, but it just seems to be totally impossible. Can't get past the first stage. I've had at least 10 or 15 attempts before I started recording this review, and I've just never been able to get close to doing it. So the later step levels might be even harder, which would be ridiculous, or they might be easier, but since you can't get past this first level, the playability is virtually zero. The fact that you can move the bike around reasonably comfortably, and there is an aim to the game, even though I can't achieve it, I'm going to give it a playability score of 2 out of 10. That gives it an overall score of 5.7 which is a little bit more than it deserves given the playability level. Obviously that's skewed by all the other ratings being pretty decent. This is very much a case of all style and no substance. If you had just made the game a little bit more easy, uh, a little bit more forgiving when you're dropping off that hang glider onto the bike, it could have been a reasonably playable game. It probably wasn't going to be like a 7 or 8 out of 10. It was probably going to be a 5 but it's just ridiculous. So there you go, that's my thoughts on Stunt Bike Simulator. Definitely not worth the $1.99 asking price. If you've ever managed to get past that first level, if you've played this game, then please let me know in the video comments along with any other thoughts about the game. That's all for this review, a nice short one, and I'll be back with another one in the near future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.